Hello there. Welcome to our little shop. Well, well, well. We have another DSL. Customer called me the other day. Said that um, his amp was crackling a little bit, so he turned it off, took all these tubes out, put them back in, hoping the tube sockets were dirty. Turned it back on, all it did was hum. So he brought it in. I've already taken part and checked it out, but I'm not going to jump ahead of you. So here we go. So anyway, he left with the uh, comment that, well, it's probably just a tube. Well, I dug into it to see what was going on. This is what we found. So, yeah, probably is a tube. Probably a couple of them. Um, <laughs> let me hook this back up and show you what I found. This is actually another case of thermal bias runaway. And I think he said this was a 2002 model amp. Anyway, uh, what I found did not shock me. In fact, I told him on the phone when he first called as well the TSLs and DSLs, all the JCM 2000 stuff kind of scares me and he wouldn't know why. I said, well, I've got a bad history with them. <laughs> so, uh, this is usually what happens. Somebody will run one of these amps until uh, they have a little crackle popping, fuses blowing, or smoke. And then uh, this is what we end up with. So let me show you what I found with a little troubleshooting. Okay, this is going to be tough to show you here because I've only got two hands. But anyway, I've kind of set the biasing up. The biasing was way off on one side. So apparently we've had a really bad mismatched set of tubes to start with. And by the way, all the tubes are out of it, of course. We're not drawing any current, so we've got the voltages and everything up here. So on this side, with the standby switch in the off position, we've got 44 volts minus 44 volts bias on this side. On the other side over here, we also have minus 44. Okay? Now, watch what happens when I hit the power switch. Standby is in operate position, alright? Over here on this side, where we had the 44 volts, we now have 65. It's going up. 70. Actually, when I checked it the other day, I had 90 volts here. Over here on the other side, We now have 41.9. So, like I say, typical problem. Uh, we've actually blown one of the protection resistors here. What I'm really surprised is this uh, protection fuse here didn't pop. But anyway, we're going to start getting into this and uh, correcting things. We're going to have to fix this board. Uh, I'm not a big fan of replacing the boards in these unless you have to. Like I said, if all these I've fixed over the years if I had to replace one board. And that was because of a separate drift problem way up here we could not fix in the preamp. All these have been managed to save because mainly this guy's going to need a set of tubes. He's going to need the time involved to change the board if you bought the board. You'd have to pay the money for the board which is close to $300 now and that does not guarantee that you're not going to have another problem with a faulty new board that's probably never been tested from the factory. 
So, we'll power this down, discharge it, start tearing stuff down. We've got some repairs to do. All right, we have all the holes drilled around pin five on all the power tube sockets. For those of you that want to know how to do it, old family trick, old favorite. Be stupid in a drill. <laughs> okay. Got a little time involved here. Been a couple hours. Actually, just turned off my stopwatch. So. I think we lucked out on this one. I think this is going to be an easy one. You can see where I did my typical repair here. Where I drilled the holes out here for pin 5. Added a grid resistor vertically. Hardwired it to the next grid resistor. And then over here to the bias supply. Ran the bias supply resistors, the 220Ks, vertically. Get rid of all this other stuff in here. We have a nice steady bias supply right now. What we have right now on two different meters, so we get to glare off that one. There we go. 52.9. That's what the bias cranked as far negative as it go. I just want to see if this drifts in me. Perfect timing, it's time for lunch. So I'm going to get my lunch and let this run a while. You can see I've still got the board out of it. Uh, the tubes are not in it, of course. So we're just running this thing to see if any bias drifts. I'm going to let it run for a while while I eat my lunch. Keep an eye on this. I'm thinking this is going to be rock solid. By the way, if you notice down here where this front resistor was, that cleaned up really well. That was mainly just soot around here from the uh, fried resistor. And something I said the other day, uh, actually yesterday when I was working on this, um, <laughs> I see the error in my ways when I said something. I made the comment, I'm surprised it didn't blow this fuse. Well, I was a little tired. I never stopped to think. That's a heater fuse. <laughs> so, unless the tube would have shorted to the heater, that fuse would not have blown. Now, that's a common thing that happens. So, really, I wasn't thinking too wrongly there because a lot of times the plate will short right to the heaters. Anyway, we're going to let this run. And see what happens. Our uh, new tubes came yesterday afternoon. I usually keep tubes in stock, but I was out of EL34s. So great timing there. So when I come back from lunch, we're going to put this back together and see what happens. I also made the comment to this gentleman when he called me to start with, I made the comment that, you know, these have a tendency to do this. And he says, oh, well, you know, it's probably just a tube. And when I called him back, I said, I hate it when I'm right. <laughs> so, anyway. Oh. So, another DSL TSL JM2000 flambe. This one went pretty smoothly, though. So, we'll be back in a bit. Okay, well. It's been about an hour and a half. I had my lunch, unpacked a package. Did a few other things, waiting around. Look at this. Negative 52.5. And negative 52.6. I'm going to put this thing back together. We've got lots of screws and stuff put back in here and bolts. Um, 
I put the board in as lightly as possible to test it because like say nine times out of ten you gotta take these things back out and work on them again but we escaped that this time so I'm gonna put it together get some tubes in this and run it some more okay here's something else too I want to mention to you here's something else I've added ran to this before in a another one so I decided to do the same thing here that's why I stood these two resistors up your connection to them is down here so when you stand them up you disconnect them from this side of the caps over here so what I do is I lift these ends solder leads onto them bring them over here and you know, attach them where they're supposed to be and that eliminates all this other circuit board connections underneath here to stop any bleeding that may happen like I say in the previous one I did from the plate resistors because all your traces go right through here right side by side just a recipe for disaster so since I saw it happen in one I'm going to do this in all of them so after these two capacitors are lifted and soldered here I use a little silicon seal to hold them down, keep them from touching the board where the old connections were up here, and then plus I put a little silicon seal over here on the grid feed resistors for the bias against the caps. Keeps everything nice and neat and solid. So let's put this gun and fire it. And there we go. That glorious hum you hear is a fully functional. Marshall JCM 2000 revived. So, for you guys that just have to know it works, see, it works. <laughs> Some of you have actually questions whether I actually fix these amps or not. Anyway, so there you go. Uh, another JCM 2000 with a thermal drift issue repaired without changing the board. As I say, I like to do these without changing the board because I like to fix the problem that I know that we have. This took a couple hours, probably about two and a half hours total, uh, and a set of tubes. One resistor that was burnt, five that I replaced while reorganizing the board layout. So, I'm going to let it run for a while. I'm sure we're good and uh, the customer can come get his amp this week. So till next time, play nice. I'll see you later.